Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to work on solving this problem right here. So we got some variables going on, X and Y, and some equations. So what are we dealing with uh, right here? So if you know the answer to that question, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I kind of put that already in the title. So hopefully all of you can get that right. But the more important question is, can you solve this? And this happens to be what we call a linear system. So if you're taking a course like Algebra 1, first year Algebra, certainly you're going to uh, be introduced to systems and you should uh, know how to solve something like this. So if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. And then of course, I'm going to uh, show you exactly how to solve this problem. I will say uh, this much, uh, there are different techniques and different approaches to solve this problem. So uh, some of you out there that are gonna get this right, I may do the problem differently. That's perfectly fine. Uh, of course, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go take a look at the answer here. And um, well, let me just show you the answer. So the answer is a negative three, two. This would be the most appropriate way to write your answer. Okay, now here, what we have is an actual x, y point, an x, y ordered pair or coordinate. So you can see x is negative three and y is two. So if you wrote your answers this way, that's perfectly fine, but understand that what we're dealing with here is a linear system, okay? Which effectively, let me just kind of just sketch this out super fast, just to make sure all of you understand what's going on. Uh, what we have here in this problem is one line, okay? This is a line, we'll call it line one, and this is line two, all right? So let me just kind of say the description of what's going on here. This is a system of linear equations. Linear equations are equations of lines, okay? And a system means that we're talking about more um, than one line. So effectively, what's generally kind of going on uh, in a uh, system, a system of linear equations, and to be even more specific, we're talking about a two-variable linear system, but effectively what's going on is we have one line like so, and then possibly uh, well, in this case, we have a second line. Now, if these two lines intersect at some point right here, this would be the system uh, to uh, the, um, I'm sorry, this would be the solution to the system. And that, and this is obviously some specific X, Y point. It's a point that lies actually on both lines, okay? So you should understand that, but here's another thing that you should understand is that some systems, okay, do, uh, do not have a solution. So if I have one line like this and another line like so, okay, these lines are parallel, so they'll never intersect, they'll never cross, okay? Then there's other additional things you need to know about systems, and uh, I'll give you some suggestions on how you can really master this stuff, but these are some basic concepts that you should understand. Now, if you understand all of that, and if you got this thing right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%. And a few stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you definitely know a thing or two about solving uh, two variable systems of linear equations. Well, that's pretty descriptive, right? Well, here's the thing, right? I'm saying systems of linear equations. Later on, as you progress in mathematics, you'll be dealing with three variable systems of linear equations possibly. And um, well, it depends on what level of math you get to. And then systems of nonlinear equations. It just goes on and on and on. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so here's the problem. And uh, notice we have two equations. We have two variables, x and y. Here's y and here's an x right there. Here's an x. So in general... Okay, uh, on how many variables you have, right? So here I have two variables I'm looking to solve for, um, x and y. That's how many equations you're going to need in, um, 
to solve for two variables. In other words, you're going to need uh, two equations to solve for two different variables. All right. So just kind of something to keep in mind. If you have two equations with three variables, generally that's not going to be enough. You're going to need that third equation. Of course, there's always exceptions uh, to this, and, and there's kind of some other kind of details I'm uh, kind of not putting into my comments here right now because I don't want to kind of overwhelm you. But in general, the number of variables you're looking to solve for, that's how many equations you're going to need. Okay, so that's what's going on. And of course, I already talked about these are linear equations, i.e. equations of lines. Now, how can we solve systems or specifically two variable linear systems? Okay, well, you have some options here. So the first technique that you learn is something called the graphing method. So if you have graph uh, paper, you can actually kind of clean up each of these equations right here and graph each line and look to see, hey, where do these lines intersect? That point of intersection would be the solution. But this is really not that practical of a method, but you do need to know it. So what you want to do is use algebraic methods and the two primary algebraic methods that you're going to use is the substitution method, okay, and or the uh, elimination uh, linear combination method. So these are your primary tools to solve uh, systems of linear equations algebraically. You need to know both of these super well, and one is not better than the other, and you're going to have to uh, kind of not get stuck. What happens is a lot of students, let's say they just love the substitution method, and they do all problems using the substitution method, and they forget about this uh, method here, you need to know both methods, and they, you know, it all depends on how your problem is structured. But uh, anyways, let's get into this problem, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start to kind of clean up this equation, so or the system here. So you can see we have 2 times x minus y equals 3x minus 1. Typically, what we want to see, let me just kind of erase this here is and again I'm speaking in generalities because uh, you know, it all depends on the problem but in a situation like this what we kind of want to get is our X's here or Y's here and then our numbers over here and then our X's over here or Y's over here equals our numbers so we want to kind of put our system in this kind of format right here okay so again line up the variables X line up the variables Y and then have all your numbers to the right. So if your current system is not in that uh, kind of form, just start to clean it up uh, to get it in that form. And then we can kind of see, uh, you know, what's the best options we want to take in terms of substitution or a combination to solve the system. All right. So here I'm going to go ahead and distribute the two uh, to this. So I've got 2x minus 2y is equal to 3x minus 1. And then I have this equation. So let's go ahead and just start uh, to work on cleaning this up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and focus on uh, getting the first uh, equation um, all cleaned up. So in other words, what I mean by cleaning up, I'm going to have all my x's and all my y's and then my numbers here. So let's focus on that. So we have 2x minus uh, 2y is equal to 3x minus 1. So what we really need to do here is just to get the x's, uh, this um, term on this side. So we just simply subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. And when I do that and kind of add down in a column manner, I get 2x minus 3x. That's negative 1x, right? Negative 2y plus nothing, negative 2y. This goes away. The x's go away over here. Negative 1 plus nothing is negative 1. So this is our new cleaned up equation. All right, so we'll come back to this here in a second, but let's go ahead and clean up the second equation now. So, right, so we clean this one up. So let's go ahead and get this one in a better form right here, the second equation. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Okay, so again, we have our negative 3x over here. So we'll add a 3x to both sides. Because again, I want my x's and y's all together. So uh, when I do this, um, we're going to add down again in a column manner. So 4y plus nothing is 4y. Then here, nothing plus 3x is 3x. And then minus 3 plus nothing is minus 3 uh, equals negative 4. Then uh, the 3x's over here go away. So now I need to move my negative 3 over to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add positive 3 to both sides of the equation. And you can see I end up with 4y 
plus 3x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now we have both of these um, equations kind of cleaned up. So the new version would be the following, okay? The, again, this was the result of cleaning up that first equation, and this is the result of cleaning up the second equation. Now, notice here we have x and y, y and x. We can just kind of fix that up real quick so we have everything uh, together. So what I'll do is I'll keep the first equation as is, negative uh, x minus 2y is equal to negative 1. And then here I'll just move the x uh, term here and the 4y uh, term over here. So all of our x's and y's are lined up. Okay, so you can see the result of doing that right here. Okay, now it's important that you do get all the variables uh, lined up, i.e. you have all the x's here, or it could be the y's as well, but it's generally x and then y and then your numbers. So at this stage, I mean, we had to kind of do um, a decent amount of work to kind of get it to this uh, point. So now this is where you want to consider what um, approach you want to take to solve this problem. Now, both approaches, the substitution method or the elimination uh, linear combination method are perfectly fine. In this uh, case, it's not so obvious on uh, which approach uh, there is to take. Well, to me, uh, this thing is tipping in the scale of the elimination or linear combination method, and I'll show you exactly why here in a second. But if you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to use a substitution method. That's perfectly fine as well, but I'm not going to get into this right now. Uh, I mean, showing you the substitution method. Now, at this point, if you guys are, uh, you know, like just a little bit overwhelmed, you're like, oh, I really need help with this, or you're confused, then let me suggest you checking out my Algebra 1 course, right? I teach everything about systems you pretty much need to know at this level. And as you progress into higher mathematics, like Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, you actually learn additional techniques uh, to solve systems. Uh, systems is a huge, um, uh, big, huge topic in mathematics that just kind of continues to stay with you as you progress. So anyways, uh, check that course out. Also, I do have uh, a lot of different videos on systems on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so I'm gonna um, take a look at uh, doing this problem uh, using the linear, uh, linear combination method. Now, what does that mean? It means that we need to get um, uh, two of these uh, variable terms, okay, either the x's or the y's, we need to create exact opposites, okay, of one another. And I'm just gonna kind of briefly talk through this system. So right here, um, I need to uh, either create a situation where I have like negative x and x, or maybe a negative 3x and a positive 3x, I need to create opposites. Or right here, I have negative 2y and 4y, so maybe I can get a negative 4y and a positive 4y down here, okay? So amongst both of these equations, you're trying to create opposite terms, all right? And you'll see why here in a second. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, all we need to do, uh, the easiest thing to do is just multiply this first equation by three, because when I multiply 3 by this negative x, I'm going to have a negative 3x up on top, and I have this bottom 3x down here, so I will create my opposite uh, term. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to uh, multiply 3 across the board, and when we do that, we have 3 times uh, negative x, uh, and then this 3 will be 3 times negative 2, that'll be a minus 6, and then 3 times uh, this negative 1 will be negative 3. So let's go and take a look at the result of that right now. Okay, so this is the result of uh, distributing this 3 across the board. And again, the reason why I did that is so I could create this situation. Okay, Now remember, in algebra, uh, you could multiply uh, anything you want to an equation, uh, specifically like a number. Okay, You're not going to break the equation as long as you multiply every single thing in the equation by that number. Okay, Again, you need to be creative and look for opportunities like what number... Uh, would be, you know, a good number to choose such that I can create an opposite, okay? And right here, you have an opposite. And now this is where we can kind of do this linear combination and elimination method, okay? And uh, the, those terms I'm saying are two ways to describe this method, but linear combination is like I'm going to combine this and this. Think of it like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, if you will. Here's your bread. Here we're going to smash these things together. 
And so that's the linear combination part. And then we're going to have the elimination part. And what's the elimination part? Well, we're trying to eliminate one of the variables. So in algebra, in systems, you can actually create a, um, here's uh, uh, these two equations. If I combine these together, I can create a new equation that is um, basically an equivalent equation for the system. I know that sounds kind of confusing. So uh, anyways, let's just continue to focus on the process here, right? So we got my opposites. Now we can kind of add these uh, together. We can do the linear combination part now. So when we add down in a column matter, we got negative 3x plus a positive 3x, that's zero. Oh, that goes away. And then I have negative 6y plus 4y, that's negative 2y. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So at this point, we eliminated the x uh, variable. Now I have a uh, one equation with one variable, right? So this I can solve. So I have negative 2y is equal to negative 4. So how do I solve 4y? Easy. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2, of course, is positive 2. So y is equal to positive 2. Okay, so... That's kind of like the hardest part here. And how do we get x? Well, now that you know that y is equal to negative 2, you could just go back to the system and choose any equation you want, okay, the first one or the second one, and we're going to replace one of the y's, okay, uh, and we're going to choose an equation, and we're going to replace the y with 2 and solve for x. So I think I'm going to go ahead and select the second equation. It will work on the first equation as well. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, so here is our second equation. Again, we know that y is equal to uh, 2, so I'm going to replace this y right here with 2, and you can see that work right there, and then we'll be able to solve for x. All right, so we have 3x plus 4 times 2 is equal to negative 1, so 3x plus uh, 8, 4 times 2 is 8, is equal to negative 1. Subtract 8 from both sides of the equation, I get 3x is equal to negative 9. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3. Negative 9 divided by positive 3 is negative 3. Okay, so we end up with x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 2. But we can, what does this mean? Well, this means that we want to think in terms of the ordered pair, the point, the coordinate that, repre uh, that represents the solution to the system. Okay, this is the point right here where these two lines cross. So we would like to kind of represent that as the order pair negative three, two. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little exercise for those of you out there that are studying systems. And if you're taking algebra, you need to be an expert at solving systems. And uh, in terms of level of difficulty here, I would say that this is like, uh, like an average level problem. So if you had difficulty with this, you know, there's just, you know, use this as feedback. Be like, well, okay, well, there's going to be much more challenging problems. Then you just need to kind of, you know, um, really kind of understand what you know and don't know. All right. Don't try to, uh, let's say, if you're struggling with something in mathematics, okay, the worst thing you could do is just to continue to struggle, obviously. Just try to work on um, figuring out problems. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is stop and go back to the basics. Go back to the very beginning. Look at your notes. You know, ask yourself, do you even understand the, the basic concepts involved? I.e., you're going to probably need to review some basic instructions, some lessons. Go back to the very beginning and then build yourself back up. So uh, this is what um, I do in my full courses. They're complete, full instruction, uh, much different than what I do on YouTube. Okay, but either way. You know, make sure you just get the help you need in order to do this uh, because systems are very important. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.